everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Virtual GM. Cody and I recap our trip through Florida. It was almost a week starting in Gainesville at our property, Sweetwater Branch Inn, and concluding at the Bytac Independent Event in Bonita Springs, Florida. This is one that you absolutely want to listen to the entire thing. Stay tuned. Honestly, yes. I would just press record. I've always found that to be successful. <laughs> I, I love that. If we grow a video, that would be That's optimal, great. I think, actually. Ideal. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, I'm going now. So am I, am I seated correctly? This is the first time I've been corrected. No, I, I actually panned to you and I was like, yes. Wow. Internally, hey, I, did I was it. like, hell yeah. What a win. Great. <laughs> winning. We're winning the moment. Um, you're good when you're ready. Okay. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Virtual GM. You've got your hosts, Spencer and Cody, here today. And man, do we have a lot to share with you guys. Uh, if you're following us on socials, you saw that we had an incredibly busy week. Very Whips. busy week. So much to update you guys on. Uh, BiTAC was a monumental success, uh, and I can't wait to talk more about it. But we'll start with a segue, and we'll let Spencer rip off that Band-Aid. Yeah, uh, just on that note, this is Cody and I have been together for 24 hours <laughs> for almost a week together, yeah. and we still don't hate each other. So mm-hmm. what I what I also I may like him a little more outside of his <laughs> recommendations for Indian restaurants. I feel like Spencer's Ooh, pretty spot on. Yeah, my I, I swung and missed on that one. Okay, so our segue again brought to us by EOS. Um, shout out Craig Andrews on that. So I'll start off with business this week. Business was definitely the entire Florida trip. It was exhausting. But it was a huge success business-wise. I thought Bytac was an absolute smash. I thought we accomplished so many good things at Sweetwater. And I'm sure we'll talk about that too. Yeah. Uh, so that was just a, a huge win. Um, also, just like the the opportunity that exists with Bytac, which we'll get into as well. Massive win. Um, my personal was coming home from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my personal win. Oh, personal man. win was coming home. Being in the St. George Airport, and then Kayla was right there, and it's like, oh, yes, I'm home. Yeah. Thank God. That's great. That so nice. I felt so bad, too, that that wine exploded for you. Oh, that sucked. Thank God it was the light wine. Thank goodness. Yep. It was dumb on my part, too. I put it in a stupid spot. Like, in my mind, as I was packing, I was like, oh, perfect. I put it, like, in the corner of the least padded part of the suitcase. <laughs> oh, yeah, Like, nice. didn't wrap yeah. it in anything. That's on me. <laughs> That's on me. Uh, so, my segue, obviously, professional uh, is, I wrote down by tac, but really, it was everything all of the florida trip um such an awesome time so much work but such a great time nonetheless and then uh personal i'm trying to hit the best sellers list uh for my book today so um if you're listening it's too late you can't help me but <laughs> yeah. no help today but you can buy the book <laughs> but you can see how it's you can see if i hit it or not i guess uh but so i've got to get about 200 sales today of the book and if i can do that i think i'll hit the best sellers list so that's a, a awesome thing or could be awesome yep. i guess because if i don't if i don't <laughs> hit it i don't hit it so uh we'll see um but let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this podcast and let's i guess let's just talk florida Ooh. so let's just start with the the whole journey Dude, we got to unwind this thing i'm like trying to go back like it's when almost, did this journey it's almost start? traumatizing <laughs> yeah, I know it is. <laughs> today i slept in till like man it's probably like 7:15 right and i was like Oh, I needed to sleep. Yeah. I finally, finally caught up. And I went to bed last night at like 8, 8.30. I stayed up a little bit later last night, but the first night home, I was asleep at like 8.45. Yeah, I was dead. Just uh, exhausted. Yep. So Spencer and I, we flew to Gainesville first. Uh, Gainesville is where one of our incredible properties, Sweetwater Branch Inn, exists. And so we, that was a long day. It was a very long day. We left St. George. I think we got to the airport in St. George at 5 o'clock 5 in the morning. Yep. yep, yes, sir. And then we landed in Sweetwater at about... Five there o'clock. Like, uh, I was gonna say like six, but yeah, somewhere in there. Five o'clock, so about three o'clock our time. So yeah. you know, a ten-hour travel day. Got in, uh, went and met with the staff there at Sweetwater. They were amazing as always. We got to yep. stay in a new prop part of the property we've never yeah. stayed in. The Nora Bell's cottage. It was amazing. So cool. Two bedroom cottage had a living yep. room and a kitchen. Uh, I loved it. Like for the two of us being together, it was perfect. A great place. Super to stay. comfortable. My bedroom was amazing. Cody's had like this really cool like old school bath claw foot in tub it. yeah that was awesome yep it was amazing and then we had a nice dining room table so we could work yep. like we were able to work there the next day and then we had a, like a wrap around porch that we sat and had coffee on and yeah, had a beer on in the afternoon really cool rocking chairs it was great and right there by the pool too which was the first time we got to experience that which i know was nice. yeah we actually got to use the pool which is really exciting and you and i had it all to ourselves. And yeah like, it was great oh we got some really cool video uh, ultimately that's what we really accomplished out there and we'll talk a little bit more about our video journey there but I mean, how many videos do you think we got? As oh, dude, so many. I think we probably got over a hundred. Yeah, would be my like guess. My phone is just littered with content. <laughs> yeah. So when we got we in, 
we went to a awesome Mexican restaurant called Boca. I think it's Boca Fiesta. Boca Fiesta. In that's downtown right. Downtown Gainesville. It was excellent. They it really had, was good. They had two dollar PBRs. Uh, yeah. Spencer got his. Uh, they had a vegan dish. It was vegan fried mac and cheese, and, and it, was it was delicious. delicious. You put wow. like a, like an enchilada sauce over it. Yeah, so good. Which was amazing. That was the first time Kayla and I were just talking about having like a vegan mac and cheese. Yeah, it's kind of hard to make that. Uh, your I learned your wife does it. Yeah, she makes that killer. Yeah, so we need that recipe. Yeah, but that fried mac and cheese was amazing. It was so. And good. then they just had like really good. Like I felt like I wasn't at a place. I got like a. I, I can't remember what the meat yeah what it was but it was delicious it was like tpt or something yeah i don't Some know weird thing is. i've never heard of before yeah, you don't ask um, questions <laughs> <laughs> and i had a I had a spicy shrimp burrito that was phenomenal so if you're in the area or you're gonna go to sweetwater i recommend boca fiesta yeah, I it was thought great it was great yeah so good and then we went and got on the electric bikes they're like the electric yeah, scooters, the scooters. But, but bikes which was you know we didn't want to i don't want to wreck again so we <laughs> we did go back to the scene of the crime where we Cody did. crashed. Though, uh, go back two episodes. I think it's episode thirty six. We talk yeah. about Cody and his penguin side across the asphalt. What's the trail that we rode on? Do you remember what that's called? I can't. It's like if you search things to do in Gainesville, it's on there though. Man, there's like this really cool wooded, and then it, it makes its way to a swamp. There's this really beautiful trail, and uh, Cornelia took us on that last time we were in Gainesville. Yeah, it's awesome. So Cody and I, in an attempt to go find where he wrecked. We made we it found right the back exact there, spot, which was amazing because without any map, without Googling it, without trying to plan a route, we just ended up there. Yeah, we're basically like Gainesville experts at this point. Like, we I just navigated, I do consider myself a local. We just navigated all around the I area. Wanna, I want to look, look that trail up. And I'm going to find that picture of the recreation of the wreck. I think I sent it to Blake and Mallory. I know I saw it on social media. Oh, that's what I did. Such okay. a great picture. I knew, oh, here it is. Okay, now I'm going to take it to this camera by Spencer. Oh, you all have to cut it in. It's not focusing. And it's not focusing. Classic it's technology. Trying. What are you going to do? So uh, we went. I can't find the trail. We rode that trail. And we, we rode all around Gainesville. We went We were down, gone for an hour. Oh, longer, I bet. Because we went to, we did the trail. Then we went to this, like the sorority and. Lechua Trail. Lechua Trail. The sorority and what's it called for guys? Fraternity. Fraternity. Like, like the row. whole like row. Yeah. And these beautiful like old mansions. Went to the campus. We went to the stadium, which was open this time. It was weird to see like all that whole row like completely vacant, you know? Yeah, because like, school was not in yet. houses. They were amazing. Went to the stadium. I climbed up and rode the alligator. Yeah, I know. Which was awesome. We got some great content <laughs> there doing that. Yep. And it was just so surreal being in the stadium because like in that point... We were doing it as like fans of collegiate football versus like yeah. content creators. Yep. So we were really just taking it in as individuals. And well, it was... last year, like we thought we were like sneaking into the stadium. Yeah. Lo and behold, that thing's open to the public. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we really weren't sneaking in. But but now, like when we went, we walked right down to the field. You can't get on the field, but you, can get right you could to reach it. through and touch the grass if yeah. you wanted. I mean, touch and the bushes are all right there. Yeah. And then we went back, got some awesome pool content. And that kind of wrapped up that wrapped up day one, which was nice because we were thinking for some reason we we're going to get in so late and not have a day, but we made a whole day out of the first day in Gainesville. Yeah, right. And, and we, I would imagine that by the time this episode is published, that content will be live on yeah. Sweetwater. Some of it. Uh, anyone who's listening should just follow that account because what we did is we made some really amazing content for the football schedule, which happened the next day. So not to steal that thunder. But Stolen. We, it's gone. <laughs> so we made a, a video for every home game at the University of Florida. That's an actually an, an excellent story. I'm just going to pump the brakes on that. Yeah, pump it. Yeah. And uh, just know that that's coming up because that was just so too perfect. Okay. Um. So day two. Day two, we did all of our like computer work that we had to get done at the resort in the morning yep. and then decided that the best thing we could do was get content of the area because we had so much content already of the property, but we needed to show people what they can do when you come to Gainesville. So we went and proceeded to have what a regular person might do over the course of a weekend or a week in Gainesville. <laughs> a whole week, yeah. And we shrunk it into one afternoon. <laughs> into, right into six hours. <laughs> and we went at, we went all across Gainesville. We started at a winery, Blue Field Estates Winery. Yep. Really, really cool. Um, it's delicious. Started the dialogue with them about doing some events at Sweetwater. They have fruit-based wine. Mm -hmm. So like blackberries, pomegranates, apples, Blue pears. Berries, peach. And I thought it was going to be a little strange. Ended up being super delicious. We had no idea it was going to be fruit wine until we got there. Right. And uh, I didn't know that it was fruit wine until she had poured the first blueberry, which yeah. looked like a red wine. Yeah, it looked normal. Yeah. 
Uh, and it, it was delicious. And it was an absolute torrential downpour. Oh, man. And so that was kind of cool and kind of made for a unique experience. And like Cody got a cool video of horses running through the yeah, field there. It, it was beautiful. It was great. Got some awesome content. And then we went to, then did we go to the, the wetlands next? Oh, dude, what did we I do? I think next? we did. I think it I next... think we did. Yeah. Did we do that? Because it, between it there and somewhere, I got those boiled peanuts. That was on the way to the wetlands because we walked around the wetlands eating the Cajun boiled peanuts. From Ron. Yep. Yeah. Old boy Ron. Saw him at the, at the church tell. on the corner. <laughs> you can tell. We asked Ron. We got two kinds of boiled peanuts. I never had boiled peanuts before. They're delicious. Cajun and regular. And as we're getting in the car, Spencer goes to Ron. He says, how can I tell which or which? And Ron goes, you can tell. You can tell. He was my, right. Yeah, you could definitely tell just by sight. And also the other one burns your mouth. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. then we went to the wetlands, which was super cool. It's all these paths Beautiful. all through the wetlands. Like a... Um, a preserve, saw an alligator, uh, lots of wildlife, and just the trails were amazing. Like the rain had just kind of stopped a little bit, so it was beautiful out, just like a little tiny drizzle. Um, and we had a great, I mean, we walked for miles. Yeah, it really was amazing. We saw, we thought they were horses. We we approached, I don't know if we ever figured out what those things were. I think were. they were antelope. I think they, they may deer. have been antelope. They were huge. Yeah. The oversized antelope, if they were. Those were really cool. And then we saw like some really large field grouse or something. Yeah. Those uh-huh. were really sweet. Uh, but like the whole purpose of that Crane place is to storks. go see alligators. So I think probably when the weather isn't like pouring, yeah, you would see some. But what we didn't know on the way out, we saw they have a a whiteboard map that you can like X marks the spot. Here's a gator. Yeah, right. Gosh dang it! Like we could have gone to all these places. Would have been helpful to know that. Yeah. So if if you're in the area, the Sweetwater Nature Preserve is an excellent place for basically a guaranteed gator sighting. Yeah, and just a cool place to go get outside and walk around. Yeah, and it was like 10 bucks to get in. Yeah, it was amazing. It was affordable. Then we went to the Butterfly Museum, which was super wow. cool. Unfortunately, it was raining still, and it is like open. Like there's a net over it, but the rain is exposed. You're still outside. And so the butterflies were significantly less active because of the rain right. but then we got there like right towards the end and waited and then everyone else left and the and the rain kind of stopped and the butterflies yeah. came to life and we had some truly magical experiences in it, there it was absolutely beautiful in there and that was something i think that's like uh part of the university of florida's research center yeah because we were on some part of the campus we there were was on UF the campus. stuff everywhere yeah and they had this like really cool interactive display inside with like augmented reality uh <laughs> We had, they had like a whole wall filled from one end to the other. And this was no small room. This will go up on the Sweetwater Instagram, but of just different butterflies. Yeah, from floor to ceiling. And the ceiling was like 30 feet high. They had a butterfly in there, real size. I don't know where you find this thing in the world, but it was the size of a basketball. Yeah, probably like Brazil. Right. This conversation invokes the the idea for me that if you're in hospitality, these are the type of experiences that you're trying to provide. Right. Like we're out here. Yeah getting this content for another hotel, right? So yeah. we were working, yes. but still truly a magical experience Oh, such for a great us. day. Yep. Then we went to the 34th Street Wall, which is a wall that's just filled with graffiti. Right. And it's like, long. It's like a mile long. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Lots of lots of graffiti. And they started, like when they built the wall, it was getting tagged and they kept cleaning it off and they'd get tagged again. So eventually they just said, forget it. And it just became a mural. Yep. And so that was really cool. And then we went to the stadium and this is where the story... This is where the magic happens. Uh, yeah, this is where the story gets real good. <laughs> so I had the idea of like, well, let's do a welcome to the stadium video. Like, here's what you're going to want to know. And so Spencer starts recording it. He's and it was the... like a video, like I'm on the stadium and I'm walking down yeah. the stairs and I'm like, hey guys, it's Spencer with Sweetwater Branch Inn. I'm going to tour you around Ben Hill Griffin Stadium and show you what to expect during a Gators game. Follow me and let's have some fun, right? Something like that. And it was great. He killed it and we watched him. We're like, man, it's really good. But we had these little microphones that we didn't get. And we're like, okay, if we're really going to do this, we got to go get the microphones. Yeah. And Spencer's like, if we're really going to do this, then we need to get uh, U of F, U of F fo- shirts. Yeah, right. Because we were just wearing normal t-shirts. Yeah, so we can look official. And I, so we looked up the team store. It was going to be about like 30, 30 minutes, minutes round trip, yep. plus the cost of the shirt. And I'm like, and we well, already, you know, those shirts are going to be expensive. They're at least shirts. $40 a t-shirt. Say 45, yeah. And we're pressed for time. Sun and, setting. Yeah. So stadium's closing. Spencer's like, or no, I think I said, let's just go look in the stadium and see if we find something. Yeah. Cause we thought there might be a team, team store, store in the in stadium. The, yeah. That's pretty yeah. common. So we like walk down into the belly of the stadium and there happens to be this door that's very official. And it said something like, like athletic administration or so, something, yeah, something uh-huh. like that. Yep. It had the logo. Like you could tell it was for personnel. Correct. So Spencer opts to open the door. He walks in. I saw I follow him. He walks down. It's like a dead end. It goes left and there's an elevator. 
Spencer's like reading the elevator line. He goes, boom, sales and marketing at the fourth floor. They'll definitely have something. They'll speak our language. We're going yep. up there. So we take the elevator up to the fourth floor, get off. There's like a glass wall all right here. And then like it goes down, turns left, another wall. And Spencer just walks in. We get in the office. There's nobody there. Yep. There's a gift set on the deck desk for Rick. And Spencer just like, hello, and starts like I start slowly walking walk way, down the hallway. Down the hall, right. And then who was that gentleman who helped us? Oh, man, what? Brent or Brett? It was some B name. I can't remember what his name was. <laughs> so some guy, he's like, oh, it's my first day here. Like, oh, yeah, it's his first week. I'll let you yeah. tell that part of the story. So this man, I'm walking down. I'm probably like 30 feet down the hallway. And it's just one long hallway, one long corridor filled with doorways. And this man pops out. His name was like Trevor or something. I can't remember. But he was like, hey, how can I help you? And I was like, oh, we're here from Sweetwater Branch Inn. We're doing some advertising for you. And we just wanted to pop by and see if we could get some T-shirts. He's like, well, great question. I don't know. It's my, my first week here. And that was like a shark smelling blood in the water. <laughs> so I was like, oh, perfect. Like, you know, I used to work at Weber State University, which this is true. I used to work at Weber State University in the sports marketing department. And so we had like a promotional closet. So I mentioned that to him. He's like, oh, I know where the promotional closet is. I was like, great. So he goes to the promotions closet and I'm kind of down the hallway and he's like, I can't find anything. So I was like, well, I'll help you look. So... <laughs> I go into the promotional closet, which is huge, by the way. Uh, I mean, it's like there's ladders. It looks like the Hogwarts library in there. It's <laughs> massive. And right in front of me was two T-shirts. And I was like, great. Thank you very much. Grabbed a, our sizes and walked right out of there. And I yelled in the hall, Cody, I got them. <laughs> <laughs> and then we put them on in the elevator on the way down. And we walk yep. out of that entrance and some woman of authority yep. like looks over at us. And she had seen us walk in as... You know, yeah, just wearing t-shirts. Sees us walking out wearing Florida gear, and you could tell her wheels were spinning. Like, what the hell just happened? How did happened? that just happen? <laughs> She's like, Trevor must have given yeah. us away. <laughs> so then we went back to the stadium, filmed that like a, a whole series of videos. What to do if you're coming to Gainesville, and then we did a video for each home game. So if you're coming to watch the Tennessee Volunteers, this is what you're going to want to do. This is where you're going to want to stay. Um, and really, all of it was surrounding the, the hotel, right? Yeah, like, all for Sweetwater. The purpose of those videos is so that we can take them. So like the Tennessee, we can run those as ads to Tennessee volunteer fans several weeks before the game starts. But what we're doing is providing a link to the hotel. So we started it off, like Cody said, if you're coming to watch the volunteers on this date, the best place you can stay is at Sweetwater Branch Inn. It's walking distance to the stadium, free parking, and there's a free excellent gourmet breakfast click the link below to book now so we really went there with a lot of intention because we knew that they're busiest during that time yeah but we also wanted to provide value and let opposing fans come and have a really great game day experience well and now like we'll be able to run that targeted around the tennessee area right yep. Yep. and so those tennessee fans are just going to be like yeah just getting in they're like oh my gosh this is Correct. amazing like look at this um so then after that we went to swamp head brewery Oh, which man. was super cool, Delicious. awesome setting. I wish we had more time. You know what the best thing that was there? The root beer. The root beer. Yeah, the root beer was Bar so none. good. That one light beer that I had, the very first light beer, like Midnight Night or oh, something. Yeah, that one was, that one was really yeah. good. Yeah, that one was good. Lots of lots of beers, unique beers. Um, I Some liked, gross. I liked half of mine, I'd say. Same. Um, I thought the peach cobbler one was going to be good. It was not. Wrong. What was sad is we were only there for like 20 minutes. Yeah, we did not get to take it in to the level that I would have liked. But see, Amazing like, setting, live music, picnic yeah. areas. Like, it was cool. I would I would love to go back and have more time. What's interesting about that, I like that first beer that I had too. Is like a Vetner or something yeah, like that. Uh -huh. what, yeah, that was like the, that was like the honey blonde. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was really good. And then I was like, great. Like, this is so good. I bet I could find this at like a Utah liquor store. Nope, that's a it's a Florida only brand. Yeah, we found out that they only it sell it in the state of Florida. Yep. Uh, so then we went to then we went to dinner. Went I think to that was it. Yeah, yeah. We went, went to Dragonfly, Dragonfly with yep. the whole Sweetwater staff, which was amazing as always. <laughs> and then Laurent gave us like a little nighttime tour of downtown Gainesville. We ripped around on those yep. uh, scooters. We again, found which the, was which was challenging, by the way. Like yeah, to find three the, scooters took us forever. So I had a great night out in Gainesville. Laurent was an amazing host. And then we went headed down to Naples. I stayed the, a day in Naples. Spencer headed over to Fort Lauderdale. And this then, is not all on the same day. We went back to Sweetwater, went to sleep. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah. is the next day. Uh, and then we got ready for BiTAC on Sunday. Spencer came and picked me oh, up man. and yep. started the, the madness all over again. <laughs> yeah, so that concludes the Sweetwater portion of this this whole journey. Now moving into the buy tag portion. I guess I, I also went to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. There, there's that portion too. Went to Fort Lauderdale. Enjoyed a great time with my girlfriend uh, and her brother's dad. 
uh, and that was amazing. Uh, fast forwarding to headed to Bytac now, we uh, we got to where it was the Hyatt Coconut Springs. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Hyatt Coconut something. It was a beautiful resort, right? Yeah, it's like amazing. right on the coastline. Uh, actually, it got impacted by the hurricane last year and flooded the first three first stories, three story, which was amazing to think about. Like the yeah, first you three stories, was... you couldn't tell at all. And also, how much water that is. That's insane. It knocked Gosh. out. There's a Ritz Carlton right next to it, and it completely leveled it. Demolished so that. lucky for it to be standing. Incredible pool area. Awesome. I mean, everything. The whole resort was really amazing. It really was amazing. Um, and so we got there a little bit early. Showed up, checked in. Cody and I enjoyed the Lazy River, um, which w- was just a Lazy River. It's mostly like families and and kids and stuff. They really had a great water park, though. We did the water slide a couple times, which, which was, was awesome. really fun. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, we got into the meat of Bytac. And Bytac really does just do such an amazing job at uh, connecting you to high level hotel executives and also really quality vendors. Yeah. In the hospitality Everyone there is space. amazing. Yeah. And in a really great way. So we went to the opening dinner. Had a really great time there. The food, as always, is just next level. It's phenomenal. And one thing about the opening dinner, too, that they do that's so cool, because when you don't know anyone, it's hard to open up a conversation with a complete stranger, Yeah. especially if they're already in conversation or they're people who know each other, so they're like a little bit clicky. A little more recluse. So they give you five pictures of yourself with like your information that are like trading cards. Uh And so if you're an executive, you have a white lanyard, and if you're a sponsor seller, you have a blue lanyard, and you have to find people... And ultimately, that's who they're trying to connect, right? Sellers with buyers. Yep. And so you have to find a seller or vice versa, find a buyer and trade your trading cards. Right. And then if you turn your five in, then they donate $25 to a charity. Mm -hmm. So not only are they doing it for a good cause, but they're creating a way to create conversation. Like you have an easy opener. You just go and say, hey, I need to trade cards with you. And then that obviously creates a conversation. That's how we met Austin from Muse. That's how that conversation started. Mm -hmm. Um, Jordan with Tambourine. So it's like... It creates all this dialogue and it creates an easy opening for right. someone who's like new to the space or hasn't been to buy tech and they just do such a good job of that. Yeah, it really was a, an excellent opening dinner. Uh, and then Cody and I were just so beat that we we're like, let's call it. Oh, exhausted. We, we went to sleep that night. Um, fast forward to the next day at buy tech, and I'll probably get some of these details wrong, but a lot of buy tech is meeting with, with vendors, but also like hearing from really educated people in the industry. So I think that's the morning that that guy talked about that's the Millie Club. Uh-huh. Right? Adam. Adam, yep. So Adam, he's got an interesting last name. Like Molganowski or something like that. Yeah, Montague or I'm something. Probably, I'm probably uh, butchering it. but Adam M. Um, he connected with Millie Club. Yeah, so he has the Millie Club. And the Millie Club is for hotels, but their ADR is over $1,000 per night. And he talked about what makes you qualified to get into that. Not only the number, but like, the level of luxury, what you're providing. Yeah. But he gave some really cool ways to help you get into the Millie Club. And one that I thought that was really impressive. In fact, I wrote these down on my phone. I'll bust that out in just a second. He That press for champagne button. That was amazing. That's such a no-brainer idea. Everyone should deploy that immediately. Yeah, they had one luxury hotel that had a button in the rooms that said press for champagne. And yep. that one button had accumulated $250,000 in revenue for them that year at that property. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it. Because how many people do it just because you have the button? Yep. I would press the button. Of course. Press the button every time. You push the button twice a night. Yeah, just to like see what happens. You don't you even know? question the price. Yeah, <laughs> obviously there's no uh, price associated with the button. Yeah, thanks. We'll send you your champagne. Yeah. Yeah. Move. So I don't know how you deploy that. You know, I think that the best way you do that, they had it in the TV. So like with your TV remote, you toggle over to it and press it. But I think there's a way... And one thing I was going to talk about was fuel as well with like an app. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. So there's a, a great company that we met there. I can't remember. Do you remember the guy's name from Fuel? Rick. Rick. Rick from Fuel was awesome. And we learned that Fuel will do a white labeled app for your hotel, which is really cool because then you get into a whole nother level of marketing from push notifications to yeah. exclusive app discounts and things like and that. A booking engine inside the app. Yeah. It's a one to one interface with your booking engine most of the time. But what you could do is inside that app, you could have like a press for champagne, which yeah. really would just be like a Stripe checkout. Yeah. That sends an order to the front desk that there's champagne to be delivered to room 12 or whatever, which would not be something very hard to deploy. Um, I'm going to look up some of the rest of these things that I wrote down because I thought they were so cool. So you look that up. Uh, they had Adam, then they had a keynote, and then you go and do your first set of... Um, vendor meetings. And what's cool too is for every meal you have with Bytech, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, you usually will have assigned seating 
just to make sure you have a chance to meet everybody. And then they'll always have you do like a thought provoking question of, you know, like one of them was if you had a walkout song, what would it be? Yeah, that was cool. And then what was yours? Um, mine was all I do is win because <laughs> obviously <laughs> I did the one that the Utah football team walks out to. Nice. Joker and the thief. That's a great one. Nice. Yeah, and classic. then they had like best advice you've ever given or received. And you share that around. And one of those they had us um, get all the information from everyone and stand up and share it with the whole room. And so you're constantly having like meaningful conversation with people yeah. instead of just sitting down at the table and like maybe looking at your phone and pretending to be busy. Shouting out buzzwords. Yeah, yeah. You actually engage in conversation. So you get to meet so many people. Do you have something that you want to share? Yeah. So I had one other that really stood out to me. Uh, so back to the Adam discussion, I had, he had a portion of time dedicated to Q and A. And so I asked him at this Millie club, what percentage of bookings are OTA bookings? And he his answer was that they're all sub 20%. He knew that there were some that were below five. Um, he mentioned that luxury bookings are always sub 20%, though. They should be. And the biggest reason for that, somehow he had figured out a way to cap that. But his recommendation and, and advice is that OTA guests do not contribute to ancillary spend. Yeah. So any additional spend, like they're not going to be the guys that are pushing the press for champagne button. Uh, because... OTA is like the race for the bottom. How do you get the cheapest price for the best value? And so when you're doing a direct booking, you're selling the value instead of selling the price, right? That's amazing because I, and I'm glad you brought that up because something else that he told me when we we're going over the Nareve thing uh -huh. is he goes, on certain levels of luxury, he's like, don't ever even put them on the OTA. So smart. Because it diminishes your value. And he's like, and totally. if you even put it on and then you take it off, they'll still leave you as a ghost listing. So don't even ever oh, enter the space. Smart. Obviously, that is for high luxury. Right. Like Millie. an Amon Gary would yeah, never be on Expedia. Exactly. Uh huh. He's like, yeah. don't even ever do smart. it, which was really interesting. Is Waldorf on it, like Expedia or Booking.com? I don't know. I don't even know if that would be that level of luxury because, like, Waldorf and Vegas, you can get there for like. What about like an LXR? Oh, man, man. I, I really wonder. I bet they are. I don't, I don't think, cause they're not like Car Crockford's isn't usually over a thousand dollars a night. You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. So, so I would mm. say that they probably are cause they're not quite even in that, even though they are super luxury. Yeah. They're not in that space that he's talking about. Interesting. Um, makes sense. So, uh, and then that night we had our games. So oh, we skipped our whole panel. Cause that was the next day. Didn't we do games that same night as the panel? Nope. Oh, that was the like awards it. dinner. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So we did our games. It's all right here. Gosh. And <laughs> we have just been traveling at such speed that it's like, what did we even do? And this is another thing that Bytech does so well. Well, first off, the day ends at three. So you get between like three and six o'clock to, to actually experience the community or the property, right? right. Because if you're right. in hospitality... You don't want to go to a conference like, oh, yeah, I went to Bonita Springs and people say, well, how was it? And you're like, I don't know. I was in a conference the whole time. You know, right. so I think most people took advantage of going to the pool or walking out around the resort, doing something. Yep. Also, if you don't it, like for us, we caught up on work during that time, which right. was nice to have the opportunity to do so. Yep. But what was so cool about the games is that so you walk in and then they assign captains just based on like when you arrived. Right. right. So yep. there was all these different colors of teams. So you go get your bandana. And then they would give, then they like go through, and then so now you're player two and you're player three. And what was so great about that is one, it builds camaraderie with your team because you're competing against the other teams. Yeah, there's right. four different games we played, so you're building a relationship with those people. You're trying to win, you're competing. So there's like that fun banter of like yeah, trying to beat the people. Right. But what I also loved is they said like, okay, you're player two, you're player three, because what happens is some people might be like intimidated to oh i'm not good at cornhole i just won't yeah, play like right. you just play let the guy who's good at it just keep playing but what we did and our team as a sherman else said we just followed the order so it was like oh, nice. one yeah. two three right. four and so we that way every single person got an opportunity to play smart every single person contributed equally and i just thought like what a like they by tech really thinks through all of the things and all the opportunities for someone to like weasel out get into the background and not participate you know, know. and yep. of course someone could have just been like i'm not doing it sure but i think everyone wants to and that provides the platform for them to feel like oh it's yeah. okay for me to do this even though i'm going to miss the board on all my cornhole throws yeah yeah and it's like so fun really easy light-hearted games like cornhole jenga um, bocce ball yeah bocce ball they had like a, an oversized like beer pong yeah um like life-size like the, you're bouncing it into like home depot buckets you yeah know? Um, but they look like uh, pong cups. So it was just like really fun and easy, but it does provide you that next level 
experience yeah. to like get to know other executives and meet new people. And all the while, we haven't even talked about this. Cody and I had microphones on us. Oh yeah, the entire time because obviously we're on the virtual GM podcast, and so we wanted to meet as many as ex- executives as possible or vendors. And just have them share some quick wisdom with us. So if you haven't listened to those episodes, episodes we'll upload them. But you can also find them on our Instagram app. Or yeah, all the interviews are there. Yep. That was really cool. We just took them to the side, recorded the videos. I mean, they're not perfect, but if there's anything we've learned from yeah. our boy Sean Cannell. Shout uh, out to Sean Cannell, by Yeah, the way. of course, obviously, is that you've got to just press record. And that's what we did, you know. Yep. And we learned things that will make it better or worse for next time. And, and just having the mic on our lapels, like... Everyone was like, oh, you, why, why do you have a mic on? What are you on? doing? You left your mic on. Yeah, and then so we got right. to have those conversations, and it was it was so good for, for the brand of Vibrant and, for of course, for the Virtual GM podcast. Yeah. And then that brings us to the next day. We had to move our panel because Gosh. T- poor wow. Tony Nelson had the worst travel <laughs> luck oh, of all, all time. time. And so he didn't even make it in until 1.30 in the afternoon the following day. So we moved yep. our panel up to the morning. And I got to say, you know, obviously I'm biased because we did it. But I thought the panel was just an absolute smash hit. It was a huge success. And shortly that video will come out. We'll also publish the audio of that too. But we really had some great panelists. And then the way that that opened up the the floor just to hearing about our, our message, which was about technology and artificial intelligence being used in independent hus- hospitality. And in this room, it's kind of like generational hospitality, yeah. right? Yeah. If you if you get what I mean, well, most executives uh, will have been somewhere for a long time to become an yeah. executive, right? So right. even the vendors, oftentimes it's their CEO or their VP, and so mm-hmm. you've got a traditionally later stage of their career individuals because yeah. they've worked for twenty to thirty years to become that executive or that VP. Totally, and we didn't want to focus all of our attention on artificial intelligence because it just didn't seem like a good use of time. So, like when we we're talking about technology, we we're talking about how do you use social media. Uh, we asked a question to Tony about his website and his website dropped his OTA bookings from 70% to just under 12%. Website and strategy. Website and digital strategy. That's right. Social media, ad strategy, all the stuff that we help facilitate here at Vibrant, right? And so that whole ecosystem dropped that OTA booking percent. And, you know, for an independent hotel, sometimes OTAs can make up a a significant portion of your bookings. I mean, they're at 70% before that, you know, it's a huge, huge amount of cost they had. Yep. And their rates have gone up in addition to, to leveraging off the OTAs too. So, and that was a huge one. Yeah. So the panel was great. We got lots of good feedback. Uh, I mean, even Bytax said like, oh, I wish it would have went 30 minutes longer. And so many people commented on the flow that Spencer able to create and, I had multiple it's people like we've say, been podcasting or something. Yeah, it's like we're on 38 episodes of this. Yeah, that's weird. Um, I had l- many people say like it was one of the most like riveting panels because yeah. panels are tough. They can be boring. They're so I always often find boring. myself checking out on yep. panels, you know, sorry like to say. Du- like the dude from Google at the hospitality show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they call it, send the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so oh it was gosh. it was just a, a huge success. Bytac loved it. I think they want to yeah. have us back. Um, actually do like a real podcast at their events, bring Blake and Mallory from Blue Form Media, yep. have like a whole road show set up totally. and execute podcast live. So stay tuned for that. We're super Huge excited win. about that opportunity. We'll have our conversation with them next week. Yep. Uh, and I can't wait to, you know, really finalize that and hopefully do that before this calendar year is up. You so know? maybe before we talk about the awards dinner, we should just talk about reasons why if you're a lodging executive or an owner or something like that, you should go to Bytac. Sure. So uh, maybe I'll kick that off. For me personally, it's the networking and just how you get to sit down at dinner. Like we were with someone at KSL Resorts. Yeah. At that that yeah, last uh-huh. dinner we went to, right? KSL Resorts, you should just look them up. They're a huge, huge development firm. They manage and own all the under canvas brand among which is a billion dollar brand. Yeah, among plenty other amazing resorts. Uh, but to be able to rub shoulders and be in the same room as these people in a way that's not forced and you're talking about your family and your friends and where you live and the sports teams that you like, things like that. And and just so naturally what you do comes up that you guys can almost always find some type of fit yeah, or long-term relationship or remember Steve, right? Yeah. From in five years, right? Well, and the vendors, like even the ones you think like, oh, 
Like I had one yeah, with floor yeah, and decor floor guys, right. and I was like, oh man, like I don't want to even do this meeting. And I yeah. sat down and it was like, one, they were awesome. And two, they actually presented this huge opportunity. We've got a couple big projects coming up and mm-hmm. we could save so much money on flooring. And for like oh, a, yeah. a Gabe Garn, one of our uh, people we invited, who's got 25 hotels, yeah. for him, that savings is astronomical, saving. right? Yep. So it's like, there's so many great connections you make in technologies. There was one, um, I, I think it was called Kenzo. Um, they were the technology people um, on the TV, like in room entertainment. Oh, and yeah. we had tried Monsieur's and it, sorry, Monsieur's, if you're listening, but your product does not good. Um, and so it canceled it. And then, so I was like, I had a bad taste in my mouth. They re- took me through their demo. It was awesome. Like, I think it's a real solution for a bunch of our properties. Wow, cool. And very affordable. And so it's like, I would have never even, because Monsieur's was so bad, I would have never even been like, let me find. Yeah. another solution i just kind of was turned off by it totally and then like you talked about fuel there was all these pms's yeah, there which is amazing. always good to mm-hmm. let yourself know what else is out there so i think another huge reason is just there's so many solutions out there that if you don't know about them you don't know yeah they did a really good job again that networking and it really is kind of like speed dating like you don't really ever sit down and have enough time to make like an informed buying decision yeah but you at least open the door to exploring what this technology is where otherwise like a cold email you quickly delete. never you know well that's how we signed up happens. with duetto we were like yeah, this exactly. is amazing let's set up a demo mm-hmm. and it probably took you know four to six months before like it went from that lead to execution yeah but it's been awesome you should, know should we spill the beans on how much this costs you yeah okay well i don't know do you think maybe not for hotel executives oh yeah. I don't want to talk about the the vendor cost. Yeah, for hotel executives, I think that's fine. I think that's fair. I don't think they care. No, but they want they want them there. Yeah, correct. Yeah, we are not sponsored by Biotech yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really cool if if you're attending like Cody and I do in a capacity where you can make a buying decision. Biotech pays for you to go. It costs you no money to to go. Um, now that I don't know if that's always the case. Um, our first year that was a little bit of a different story. Our yeah. second year we didn't pay anything for it. Um, but your flight is reimbursed. The hotel cost is completely free. And then in addition to the hotel cost being free, you get served, uh, a breakfast, amazing lunch, and dinner. Meal. Yeah. Every single day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Uh, so the cost to go and have this experience is really negligible. You can check out by and see all the events that they have throughout the U S and, and really the world. Like they have some of the Bahamas, Puerto yeah. Rico, um, some of the locations that we aspire to go to. Right. Uh, but anyways, you guys, if you're on the buying side of this, if you're a hotel owner, executive management company, whatever, you should certainly look into these events because it's most likely going to cost you nothing. Yeah. Everyone who came, uh, to be a guest on our panel, it's all planning and all planning to go back again for another event because they loved it so much. And really the only thing that you're at risk at paying is like your transportation to and from the airport. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then your baggage and then realistically, that's a Starbucks. That's That's all. Yeah. That's all you have to pay for. I remember the first time Spencer told me about it. I didn't believe it, you know, and I think Gabe felt the same way talking to Brack. He was like, I don't know, dude, this seems like a little fishy. (laughs) And that's how I felt too, because it's like, if it's too good to be true, it usually isn't, you know, it has the stench of a scam, but it absolutely is not. It's one of those things that actually is too good to be true. It's just, it really is. It's the greatest event you could ever go to. And if you're on that buying side like spencer said it doesn't have any costs associated with it so i mean there should be a waiting list of executives trying to get to the event yeah there absolutely should be and i thought that was really amazing that we had the opportunity to bring others too so if you're interested i I would imagine cody and i will probably be back in another panel or discussion so if you guys are interested in traveling with us uh, shoot me an email spencer the vibrant team.com and we'd love to open up that discussion. Absolutely. And I think for the vendors, what's so cool, if you're a vendor and you're like, huh, well, does this make sense? I don't think any event has ever given the vendors a better platform than Bytech. Uh, definitively, 100% true. I think that the spend to be on the vendor side of the table is completely unmatched because you know that every meeting that you have is someone qualified to make a buying decision. It's a you. real opportunity. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, and all the networking on top of that. So uh, and then that takes us to that, the end of the day. We had more vendor meetings that second day, had some free time. Spencer and I hung out at the pool with a couple of the people from Bytech and had some conversations about the day. And then we, oh, I forgot the most important thing, the peanut butter and jelly ch- challenge. Oh, man. So yeah, yeah. at Bytech, they always find a way to get back to the community. Um, this one was for the biggest food bank I think in the United States, they said they're local to Florida, like yeah. Farm Fresh or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. It was so, so it's cool. Farm though. something. And so you always have this peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And we made, I think, over 800 
It was like uh, 818, yeah. Peanut butter and chili sandwiches that were all going to go to people that day to feed them, give them meals. Um, Spencer and I were, were lucky enough to get somehow on the same on the team same by team. luck. Yep. Uh, somehow we didn't win. I think it's because Spencer ate some of our sandwiches. <laughs> no, no, no. I only, there was a heel <laughs> left, and there was just a singular heel. So I was like, I'm smacking that. We didn't even make the podium, which was disappointing. Which was shocking. Well, obviously, we need to recount. Yeah, team something. two got. I, I don't know if our guy didn't put the stickers on or what. There was obviously something. a... Someone stole the sandwiches or something, a which is crazy because I last year my team took first, but you know, it's because I kifed all the sandwiches from all the other teams. I'm going to share a strategy here. Tell me. So next year, I'm going to get. I'm going to take the role of the sticker putter, right? Because that's oh, how they count smart. it. And I'm yep. going to take my team stickers. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take half of them and go to another team and say, I'm on your team. And I'm going to put <laughs> all of my team's stickers because they won't know. They no, won't no, know what no, team no. you're on. Yeah, so whatever yeah. team I'm actually on, I'll take half the stickers <laughs> to another table. And then I can and, be the sticker yeah, person on ours. And then I'll put yep, those on. Smart. And so then we will. And that had to have been what happened. Did we ever run out of stickers? No. So we had plenty of... So that's they insane. just count the stickers. That's brilliant. Yes. So that's how you do it. So I hope smart. no one else is listening and doesn't steal my idea. It's too good not to share. You so, know, J- uh, Jeffrey's listening for sure. He boxed me out. Yeah. I tried to go <laughs> steal that man's bread because I learned that they had a surplus under their table. What? Wait, they, Yeah, they had a whole box of five extra loaves. Cheaters. That's so rude. So <laughs> up at the front, they had all these boxes. Oh, and they just took the whole box. They took the entire box. Which I thought I did good because I went and got three extra loaves. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, I don't. I feel like we did better than our number. Um, we for sure did. But then they have the awards dinners. So they announce what teams won. Uh, but the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Also, the team events send you off with an awesome departing message. We took second, by the way. Yep, we did. Should, nope. You took third. Mm-hmm tied for third that's even worse actually <laughs> we're only five points away it's when i shared about how my whole team engaged it sounds like you didn't have that same experience so i had to lead the team so maybe that's why i mean i was the appointed team leader so i i had to do all the scoring for our team in fact we were playing the beer pong one and i got up and someone on the other side i can't it's the same guy who was like i'm it impressed was, with you guys it, oh yeah, that yeah. Guy. uh-huh so he's like you guys can't have college kids Playing beer pong against us competitors. Yeah, we had that. Uh, and I was like, good news. I never went to college. Well, I guess I did, but a Mormon college. We're definitely not beer pong in there. We had that one. I can't remember his name. Another college kid who just uh, left or just moved to Florida. I can't remember his name. And he was uh, doing cornhole and he tried to throw again. I was like, no, 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 ringer. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, take your ass I to saw the back. You. I <laughs> saw you tell that guy what's up. That was actually hilarious. <laughs> I do remember that guy though. What What did he do? He was, he was a seller. I can't remember yeah. what for. Start, name started with a D, I think. Yeah, he was a cool guy. Um, but anyway, so that kind of wraps it up. Then a lot of people obviously socialize, uh, go hang out in the bar, have an open night. What, Spencer and I were just so exhausted, we never did that. Yeah. Um, the, the trip really took it out of us. But overall, an unbelievably successful event. Stay tuned for more updates from us. We really hope to execute on being able to travel there and doing those um, doing those podcasts live at Bytech. I think it'd be an awesome experience and a great way to share the Bytech message. Yeah, and if you're not following us on social media platforms yet, like Instagram and LinkedIn, we put a lot of Bytech information yeah. on there too. I would imagine if uh, if you're a fan of the show, just stay tuned. We've got some really exciting stuff coming up with Bytech in the future. So just hang tight for those, but definitely follow along so you can see our journey through Bytech as well. And what's the what's their newsletter? Hosp- the hospitality. Oh, um, let me pull that Hospitality up. Interactive. Hotel Interactive. Hotel Interactive. Yeah, they just did an article about our uh, panel on that too, so you can check yeah. that out. I, and I just reshared that on my LinkedIn. So, if and I guess we that, can put that me. article. We should put that in the show notes of this episode. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Anything you want to leave them with? Uh, I don't think so. Check out bytechevents.net. That's what I'm going to say. I'll leave it at that. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoyed the episode.